this scripture that I'm going to read in Deuteronomy 31, verse 7 and 8. It's almost a year ago that I, I wrote this down on my calendar. I felt like this is a verse of scripture that I'm going to use on New Year's Eve. And this is what it is. Deuteronomy 31, verse 7. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn, un sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that, goeth, that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And my title is, It's Still Fear Not. It's still fear not. <laughs> Praise God. I've been going to church for 65 years. And I'm not 65. I've been going to church since I was two years old. I can tell you what the flavors are underneath the pews of all that gum. It's a totally different world under the seats. I know all that. I know what it's like to, you know, I've been church all kinds of time, but I never ever get, I never get tired of church services. <laughs> I mean, 65 years. I mean, I'm fired tonight. I am just fired and wired and all that, all the above. I don't ever get tired of giving praise to Jesus. And I want us all to just stand and do it right now. Come on. Why don't you shout unto the Lord uh, with everything within you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 I will bless the name of the Lord forevermore. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Adahara hora hora haya. Woo. You can be seated. Now, what uh, the, the text that we in the text we read, this was a, a changing of the guard, as they say, and uh, Moses was talking to Joshua, and he was telling Joshua these things in front of everybody. Israel was congregated together, and Moses said to his right-hand man who's been there for many years. He said, be strong, of good courage. You're going into the land where people said you couldn't go. Yeah, land of promise. Going in, fight the giants that were still there 40 years later after they scared all of them. The Lord swore unto their fathers to, to give this land to them. And he said, you're going to cause them to inherit that land. And he said, I want to tell you something else also. It's the Lord that's gone before you already. He's already prepared the way before you. Come on, I don't believe God's changed at all. I believe he's prepared the way before us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil tries to tell you you're all by yourself, uh, but I want you to know uh, God's not only with you, he's prepared the way before you. And he's going to be with you, and he's not going to fail you, and he's not going to leave you. And then he said something that's throughout the Bible. He said, fear not. Neither be dismayed. Wow. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. The Bible does tell us that fear has torment. And Jesus said, only believe. Don't you fear, only believe. Back in the Bible days, we find uh, fear not or uh, saying in other words, uh, it was the same, the same thing, basically, fear not. Why was it said fear not? Because every time you see fear not, 
God was about ready to intervene. I said God was about ready to intervene. And the, and the devil has not changed his tactics. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices. He still uses the same tactics. Faith is. There's no visible evidence. If there is visible evidence, it's not faith. Because faith, the Bible says, is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. That means you don't see anything that you could use as evidence. Some people say, well, show me and I'll believe. Forget it. Not a chance. There's no visible evidence. You need to believe God that God can do it. Fear is the enemy of faith. Uh, Amen. Even though I don't see it, uh, as we sung it already, uh, God is still working. Uh, even though that there's nothing, uh, it doesn't mean that I, that I, uh, I can't walk uh, by faith. Uh, where faith is, there's no visible evidence. You got to understand that. Just because you don't see anything happen doesn't mean that nothing's happening. Because every time where faith is, there is no visible evidence because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence is this. You don't see it. Not seen. God, I believe, wants us to be at peace. He wants us to trust him. Every time Jesus said, fear not, I had to look at this. After Jesus said, fear not, what happened then? I've looked at these instances and every single time he said fear not prior to a miracle happening. In the Old Testament, I've looked at it. I've looked at every, every backwards and frontwards and sideways. I've looked at it. It's the same thing in the Old Testament. Following the fear not, God made a way where there was no way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just in Exodus chapter 14. It's in all through the whole Old Testament. Every time following the fear not, God was making a way where there was no way. The impossible is the end with mankind. It's the end. It's the end with man, but it's not the end with God. Because the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. How many times not only the disciples said it, but we find ourselves saying, and not only did they say, but how, not that only did uh, probably Jesus' followers, uh, they said it in another way, but Mary was the one that said, how can these, was not she the one that said, how can these things be? Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? Faith changes the outcome. I said, faith changes the outcome. You don't, oh, you don't believe me? I could have at least, I could have oh, all kinds of people. Just pick them anywhere, testify, and they tell you that God did work and nobody saw it happening, but God did it. And God was working when even nobody saw that it was working. God can reach beyond the end. I said, he can reach beyond the end. He's the author and the finisher. He's able to write the book and make, make the end be what he wants it to be. When the last page of the book is written, God's the creator. God is the one, uh, to the music director, I might say that God is the one who plays off the keyboard. Yeah, he, he, he goes beyond the end. He, play, he, he, he works, uh, I got to get carried away here. But he works in areas that we don't even realize that he's working. The, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but three times Brother Libby, Brother Libby prophesied in 2008, it was. Three times he prophesied. He prophesied over my wife and I. We tried to avoid it, but he found us and he did it three times that we would see great revival. We would see great revival. Well, I've already seen great revival. Okay, let me stop for a minute. You can't revive something that's never lived. 
I said, you can't revive something that's never lived. Perhaps sometimes we don't really know what revival is. Now, please don't read in, into anything that, about what I'm saying right now. You don't have to be a pastor to see. And you don't, I, I understand, you probably don't know where I'm going with that. The prophecy is, I'm going to see great revival. I'm getting ahead of myself tonight. But I'm believing that people that are called by his Jesus' name are going to be revived. It's the scent of water that we were talking about the other day. That book of Job talks through the scent of water. What happens? There's a budding. There's something that happens there. Life's, life coming again. Yeah. Whew. I feel that all over. The Bible says in Galatians 3, verse 6, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore, look at that now, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. It was said, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Back that up just a little bit. Verse 6, yeah. Yeah, it was counted unto, accounted to him for righteousness. Or what's righteousness mean? Righteousness is a, is a right standing with God. That was what God was looking for. What Abraham had was faithfulness. Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. Abraham walked by faith. It hasn't changed one bit. They that are not walking by faith can't please God. Well, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's what the Bible says. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why fear not? Because the enemy is after our faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. And fear immobilizes you so that you do not believe God. But God does not want you in this condition. He is receiving no glory. Uh, fear has torment, and God does not want you to be, be, to be tormented, but God wants you to walk from faith to faith, from victory to victory. Uh, from glory to glory, uh, Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. Uh, you don't have to be able to sing pretty, uh, however you, if you feel it is or feel it isn't. Uh, he said, make a joyful noise. That's right out loud. You can't, uh, you can't make a noise by just muttering under your breath. Uh, you got to make a noise, a uh, loud noise. Uh, praise God and serve the Lord with gladness. How does that make a difference? Glee, mirth, pleasure, rejoicing. I'm not going to come David freezing on it here right now, but uh, glee, uh, God, gladness means glee, mirth, pleasure, rejoicing. Serve, a bond servant, a worshiper. And look at verse 3, please. Know ye that the Lord, he, that the Lord, he is God. you got to know this stuff. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. The Lord's God. We're his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Now I realize this is a this is a faith message that I'm preaching tonight. It is, and we're walking into the unknown. Uh, and faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things uh, not seen. Uh, and we're going straight into the unknown. Uh, I want you to know, my friend, uh, that you are in company with the heroes of faith. Uh, you're in good company tonight. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, they walked into the world uh, of the unknown. Uh, we are walking uh, in faith, uh, and we are walking in promise. Now, I'm going to show you a difference here. Verse 13 of Hebrews 11, these all died in faith. They all died in faith. Say, big deal. Yeah, it sure is. It, what's, what else to say? Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. 
and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. My, my. They walked in faith. They died in faith. Not having received the promises. Here's the difference. We have. We have. We are walking in faith and by faith. The first message that I ever preached, I think it was Alina, was Alina Branscombe? It was a meeting room or a recreation room or some kind of room. First message I ever preached was safer than a known way. Was that the first place? Yeah, it was. Up by where Armstrong's lived, I think. Up behind, Lord only knows, up behind where Walmart used to be. Or Woolcore, or whatever it was. A long time ago. Imagine that. Over 31 years ago, safer than a known way. I started preaching 31 years ago. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I probably preached that for about several weeks in a row. In one form or another, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. And there was a time going on there for, I don't know, several months right in a row. Every week, there was, there was kids, young people getting the Holy Ghost. I mean, it, it was happening. You remember that, Brother Sister Armstrong? Yeah. Hallelujah. I want you to know the joy of the Lord is still our strength. God's still our strength. Now I'm preaching. It's not only still the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's still fear not. I'm preaching that tonight. It's still fear not. Same message, same God, same faith, but we, we must qualify everything by saying that there is something different now. This is what's different. God does not stop getting greater. I said, God, it's, it's, it's unqualified. God does not stop getting greater. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, I might say. Is that qualified? No, that's unqualified. He's greater tomorrow and he's greater next week and he'll be greater in your life no matter what. God's greater than any situation you're going through. My God is greater. <laughs> through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Oh, yeah. You think of what the Lord has brought you through. My, my, I just think of what, what has the Lord brought you through? What has the Lord brought you through? Uh, Brother Trevor Melton, uh, no, we're not going to die in our dilemma, are we? Uh, hallelujah. We're not going under, we're going through, are we? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I still believe that. Daniel 12, 1. Daniel 12, 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince. That's not Michael Duran, that's... Sorry, burst, burst your bubble. Let's talk about somebody else. This is an angel. Maybe you are an angel. I don't know. Your mother thinks so. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, the angel for Israel, thy people, the angel for Israel. Say, how does that apply to us? Well, if you've been around any length of time, you should be able to put this together. We're the spiritual Israel now. Standing for the children. Notice what it says? The children of thy people. Okay. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since it was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that is found written in the book. The, the angel Michael is the warring. Everyone, that's what it says, everyone. Warring angel for Israel. Children of thy people. Great time of trouble. You hear people every year say, well, it can't get any worse than what it is. It sure, does, it can, it sure can. It just keeps getting worse and worse. 
I mean, 10 years ago, I didn't think that, be, that they'd be telling people in the schools that you can choose you want to be a girl or a boy. I never thought there'd ever be a school that would have a box of caddy litter in case someone was going to be a cat. But it's happened in our dear city. Wow, I never thought, that, I thought that it, it just keeps getting worse. There's the unknown. Not much wonder we talk so much about walking by faith. Not much wonder there's a walk by faith. Uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, it's an unknown m message uh, and it's an unknown way uh, and it's an unknown, uh, it's an unknown, a lot of unknown things uh, that, uh, that we are not, of course, aware of. Uh, but the message is still this. The message is still fear not. God's going to bring deliverance because the angel Michael is being dispatched to deliver those who've been baptized in Jesus' name and aren't serving God right now. What's it say? Does it say everyone or not? It does. Every single one. It says everyone. I believe there's going to be a call like this. Come on home where you belong. Get out from where you are and come home where you belong. When you've received the name of Jesus, when your name is written down, you'll never be the same. I never understood that Bible verse that says the seed remains in them. What is it? Oh my, oh my, because uh, you hear this testimony from everybody that's walked away and come back. Uh, it was every single day, it was on my mind. Uh, every single day, there was something uh, that brought it to my mind. I have never failed to hear uh, one person, or there's one person never failed to say me, I should say, or just tell me that, uh, that it was upon their mind. Never be the same. It's not too good to be true either. It's Bible says it's happen, it's going to happen. You don't know what's all going on in the angelic world right now. You don't really know what God's doing. You don't really know God's up to. You think that all this bad stuff that's coming and what about this and what about that and what about something else? The message is still fear not. God's got everything under control. I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to walk with Jesus, and he's going to help us. Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 12, verse 30. For all these things will the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that you have need of these things. You think God's looking at you? Of course he is. His, your attention may not always be, yeah, you said that. Your attention may not always be focused upon God, but his attention is focused upon you. Hallelujah. Verse 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom. Say, what about all this happening? What's going to happen to the currency? And what's going to happen with credit cards? And what's going to happen with debit cards? I don't have an earthly clue. And is there going to be a currency change? And what's going to happen? And and uh, we, we don't even know what we do. We put money money in the bank or put it under the mattress. You know. And well, what what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to save your money or give it away? Or what are you supposed to do anyway? I don't have an earthly idea, but I believe that the safest place to be is right in the middle of the will of God uh, because I believe that God uh, is helping us. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Hmm. When you're pastoring, and not only that, but individually as a Christian, 
everybody. There's things you stand for, and there's things you stand against. There are. And I've determined that I'm trying to practice it anyway because I am old school. My children and grandchildren think I'm a dinosaur. Actually, that should make me pretty popular today. But I'm not going to preach against change just because it's change. I'm not. But there's a lure. There's a lure that comes from the devil to try to get the church to allow the things of the world to creep into the church. Little by little by little, we must be aware of this. I'm aware of the importance of this message. And I'll be done in a short time, I think. I don't know what time I started. But I'm aware of the importance of this message, and I'll try to remain aware of that fact. It must be known what you stand for and what you stand against. For if you're not, or for if you are for something, you'll be against something. God's a God of absolutes. His commandments are not suggestions. He doesn't change them, not one time. I still believe and preach what I did over 31 years ago with the exception of one thing. And I do not take a complete stand against the Internet. In my opinion, would be much better without it. When it was first made available, I could see there are some very evil things associated with it, and I said, not in our homes. And I see that the horse is out of the barn on that one. But I'm going to say this anyway. You better have a, have a complete handle on the Internet or it'll drag you into hell. You spend your time even sitting around watching YouTube. That's not right. You can even watch YouTube and laugh all day long. And what an absolute waste of time. You're, going to be nothing, you're not going to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. No, you're not. You're not yeah, you, can, you can say, well, I'm not really doing anything sinful. Well, maybe not. But I guarantee you, you won't be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. The enemy would like to distract you from the purpose of God, but you want to you want to you want to realize I'm not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Uh, I'm going to zero in on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We must not forget our purpose, the purpose of the Lord, to seek and to save that which was lost. Fear not, little flock. It's a Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I still believe it. Hallelujah. We live in a very confusing time. And we will be confused if we do not keep our focus on God. You say, what about this and what about that? There's a lot of things I don't have an earthly clue. I don't know. Will COVID ever come back? Is there COVID-23? <laughs> there was COVID-19. Oh, my. I hope not. Will this come? Will this happen? Will... Whatever, you know what? My Bible shows me that God's church is going to survive through everything, no matter what happens. You, you say, are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid because Jesus told me not to be. Fear not. The message is still fear not, but put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ. We must not forget our purpose. Our purpose is to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the purpose of Jesus Christ. And I have learned, and I'm going to say it and I close. I, am, I have learned what is the most important thing in being a Christian. And I'm going to tell you what it is. This is the most important thing. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Say, what about the new birth? Of course I believe in the new birth. I believe there's only one way to be saved. I believe it all and probably some more. I believe it. 
I believe in the born again experience. I believe it's absolutely necessary to be saved. But I believe as a Christian, your relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing that I can focus upon is your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's important that you touch him in this service tonight. And it's important that he touches you with his power and presence. It's important that you receive direction from the Lord. It's important that you do. And it's important that he receives affection from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Were you, that, you were there too, Sister Karen. Were you not? Yes, you were. Did preach in safer than a known way. Sister Margaret McClear, you were there. Is there anybody else that was there for? Oh, Tyson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How old was he? Four or five? <clears throat> Four. <laughs> I'm sure he remembers. <laughs> my, oh, my. I still believe it. It's, it's that way. I still believe with all the unknowns is still fear not. And that's our relationship with Jesus Christ that really matters. Nothing else really matters in your walk with God but that. Yeah. You can read the Bible four or five times, but you don't have that relationship. It ain't going to work. You can sing like a canary, but if you don't have that relationship, it's not going to work. It's important that you touch God, that he touches you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you stand with me? You've been very kind, and I don't know how long I've been. If I've been longer than you expect, well, I've, you won't have to put up with me as much. <laughs> but, uh, shoot one a hand at least into the air and, uh, and give praise to the Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's some wonderful testimonies here. There really is what God's. Brother Jeremy Duran and Brother Michael Duran just scratched the surface, really, on huh? all they could have said. <laughs> yeah, I just scratched the surface. So glad that 2022, my son came home. I love you, Brother Whitney. We've been through a whole lot. You were my friend over the years. Hallelujah. You're, you can say, devil, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. I'm still here. We've been through a whole lot. We're still here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I know, Jonathan, you're you're excited about getting married sometime. That's what they tell me anyway. They're engaged, so I presume that's a commitment. But your relationship with Jesus is still the most important thing. It really is. I remember Brother Roger Williams. I remember I remember you sitting over in the old sanctuary. Like, I'm standing preaching like this, and he's sitting right there. I have to look right up at me like that. And I remember the day he said, he was going to two different churches, going to one of a denominal nature. He was a big shot in that church, you know. I, re I 
I remember one day, he, finally, he said to me one day, he said, I can't go back there, it's so dead. And I says, oh really? I wanted to say, you. That's what I wanted to say. Brother David Hickey, we had some great times studying the Word of God together. And I've told people all over the place of, of some things that you told me when we had our study. I didn't ask your permission, but I did. That's absolutely awesome. Michael was really into the cheese, and Jeremy's really into the peanut butter. I know that. Praise God. I, uh, I got to be careful. I'm not going to be future pull. I'm going to be nostalgic driven here. I got to be careful. God's not a lot of things, but let me tell you, folks, keep, keep, keep it on. Keep, keep it on because uh, your relationship with God's the most important thing. Let's spend some time in prayer right now. God's going to help us right now. Let the Lord touch you brand new. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, why don't you just step out of your seat? Then? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, O oh Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I never get tired of talking to you, Lord. Hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I never get tired, God, of spending time with you. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's the name of Jesus.